Hello and welcome everyone. Today we'll play a fun little game. I will show you pictures and you will tell me how to exploit it. If you don't know, I will explain it. So let's get started. The first picture is a power up output from a Windows machine. So we can see that it's checking for different things. And we see that it's on quoted service paths and a service executable. Now, is this exploitable? What do you think? It heavily depends, is the answer. It's written to find a path that could be exploitable, but it all depends if we can have control to start the service. If we have enough access to actually start and stop the service, then yes, it's exploitable. Number one, if we have a service um, that has an own quota service path vulnerability, that again can be abused by placing an executable in a specific place. I won't go into the whole uh, exploit right now. I have videos on it in the course. And then the um, the other one is essentially we could replace the service executable, the 0 tier one exe And again, if we can start the service, then the service runs under the start name system, right? So it's an elevated context. And then boom, we get a reversal as system and we're happy. That's the first one. Let's continue. The next one has to do with uh, privileges on a Windows host as well. So what do you think when you see this? Does anything look exploitable? To me, it definitely does. Um, specifically, the SE impersonal privilege and the SE sign primary token privilege. So when you see these privileges, you should instantly be thinking of potato attacks. If you're not familiar, then look up uh, SE impersonal privilege and God Potato, Prince Poofer, and Juicy Potato, and Rogue Potato, and really I love all these potato attacks, but yeah. These ones are always beautiful to see because they typically give you a very nice and simple privilege. But I do recommend if one of them doesn't work, I highly suggest that you use different potato attacks because they're all a bit different in terms of the underlying mechanisms in which they work. Now in this output, we can see a Linux host. So does anything look interesting here or does it all look boring? What well, to me, um, None of this screams like guarantee privilege at all, but we can see port 3306 being open, right? Which is like um, typically MySQL, right? A database, um, which is interesting. If we have the the database credentials to actually to get into the database and enter some uh, some credentials, but we also see port 88 open. Now in this scenario, this port was not open externally, so if you were to scan with Nmap, you can't see this port. So it's some form of web server running locally that is only reachable internally, right? So this is also very useful to keep in mind. And um, it's something that you don't want to miss when it comes to OCP, where you didn't get a privilege because you forgot to check internal ports. Because it is in this scenario, you need to do some pivoting, right? Either something with Legolo or Chisel. So definitely keep an eye out on um, listening ports internally. Now in this scenario again, we can see the output. So in this scenario, we've got a shell from WordPress. So these credentials might not be too interesting to us, but they might be using credential reuse. Maybe the root is reusing these credentials. Maybe we could log into the database, find some more credentials, remember cracks and hashes, and then try to uh, reuse those, right? With root or different user, etc. You always want to check for credential reuse. And yeah, that's what I would check in this scenario at least. Now in this scenario, um, this was the port 88 that we saw earlier. Okay, so it was actually a Jenkins instance that was um, listening and we could also see in the processes that it was running under the context of root. And if you're not sure and you find nothing else, then it's it's a good idea just to try, right? But yeah, and it, uh, it was running under the context of, um, of root in a Docker container, if I remember correctly. And yeah, so we had to essentially do some pivoting uh, using Chisel to be able to get to this host, right? Because you can see in the URL that it's under localhost. So again, I had to use Chisel to be able to graphically look at this uh, instance in my Kali. And again, in this scenario, the first thing that I would do is to check for default credentials for Jenkins. And I would also see if I could fingerprint like a specific Jen Jenkins version, right? For like, if there was a public exploit, etc. 
and we found out that the default credentials, the username is typically admin, right? Or at least it makes sense to assume that. But for password, there's really nothing default, right? But I suggest you check basic stuff like admin, admin, admin root, admin password. And if none of those basic things work manually, then brute force it, right? Because we already have a high likelihood chance of admin being the, pa the username. So that's already half of the credentials that we have needed. So yeah. Uh, this is, the, you could see partially me setting up the pivoting with Chisel on the server side. And then this is me using f -Alt and then relaying all the traffic through the proxy, the Fox5 proxy, um, at localhost 1080. And then just specifying all the other things that needs to be specified for the uh, post request to be successful, right? So yeah, very useful. So we were essentially able to brute force and eventually find the password to get in. And we got in. In this scenario again, when you see a Jenkins, the first thing that I'm thinking is that I know that this is Jenkins and I know that once you get access to a Jenkins instance like this, it's typically easy to get a shell because the uh, Jenkins have this script console that you can heavily abuse to essentially get a reverse shell. You can easily find this out by just Googling um, Jenkins uh, script console reversal, right? And you will be easily able to identify this as well. But yeah, it really highlights uh, the importance of um, checking internal ports because we get a new reversal landing under a different context, right? So yeah, that was the video. Really just a quiz, like a mini quiz where I'm showing different scenarios and let me know if you like this type of content or really just what you prefer down below. Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP, then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video. but. Once you have completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage from someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's going to be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused with the offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle, where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.